Okay, so this is a homework help video for Unit 1, Worksheet 5, and I'm going to start with question number 2. So for question number 2, all you're trying to decide is what function to substitute your values into, and so you look at the numbers listed here. So for this one right here, you're going to choose any values that are x, um, for x that are less than or equal to negative 1. So for example, um, numbers smaller than negative 1 and equal, so you would start with negative 1 and any number smaller than that, so that would be negative 2, negative 3, and so on. So if you get any number smaller than negative 1, then you would substitute into this equation. And then for this one here, you're going to choose any number greater than negative 1, so not equal, but greater than negative 1, so that would be starting with 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so you can use decimals as well, but we're just going to be uh, checking for integer values. So for the first one here, I want to find g of 0. So I'm looking at what are the numbers greater than negative 1, so 0, 1, 2, 3. So in that list, 0. So I would use this equation here and evaluate at 0. So I'm going to do that just down on the side over here so I have some room. So for number 2, for g of 0, so I know to use the bottom equation, so wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace with a 0, and then simplify that. So that would be 0 plus 1, and then 2 to the first is 2, and then 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. So g of 0 would be negative 1. So now for part b, I want to find g of negative 2. And so for g of negative 2, I'm looking at my list here. So here's negative 2, so because negative 2 is less than negative 1. So then I'm going to evaluate g of negative 2 into the top equation. And so I would replace my x value with negative 2. So then negative 2 goes in for x. So instead of x plus 3, it'll be negative 2 plus 3. So I have 4 minus 2, and then the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3. So order of operations, I want to do what's inside first. So I'm not going to subtract here. I'm just going to copy down 4 minus 2. And then negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. And then the absolute value of 1 is 1. So then I have 4 minus 2 times 1, so 4 minus 2, which is just 2. So then g of negative 2 would be 2. Okay, and then let's do one more here. We're going to do e. So this was for part, um, oops, part a, part b. And then now for part e. So same concept. So I'm going to do g of negative 1. So negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So that means I want to do the top function here. So I'm going to replace x with negative 1. So I'm going to do it right below. So I have 4 minus 2, and then replace x with negative 1, and then everything else stays the same. So order of operations, do what's inside first. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And then the absolute value of 2 is 2. So then 2 times 2 is 4. And so 4 minus 4 is 0, so then g of negative 1 is 0. Okay, so there's question number 2. Okay, and then we're going to take a look at question number 5. So for question number 5, we want to graph this. So I'm going to have handy um, pens, pencils um, of different colors to make it easier to graph and distinguish what we're working with. So I'm going to just start with my top function here. So this takes up a lot of space. I'm going to use all this room right here. So for my top function, I have y equals 3 to the x plus 1. And that's in standard form. And so I don't need to do any shifting. So I want to find my start point. So I'm adding 1 to x. So that would be at negative 1. And I'm not adding anything to 0. So that would be 0. And then my stretch is 3. And then I want to find my split point. So here's my split point. So my x is negative 1. And I want to find its corresponding y value. So to find its y value, I'm going to replace x with negative 1. Okay, so replace x with negative 1. So I'm going to do that up here. 
So that would be 3 to the negative 1 plus 1. And that is 0. So 3 to the 0 is 1. So when x was negative 1, my y value is 1. And then I want to indicate, should it be an open dot or a closed dot, because I don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to do it now. So it can equal, so that's going to be a closed dot. So I have my start, my stretch, and my split point, and I'm going to graph all of those. So I'm going to go to negative 1, 0. So this is for my asymptote because it's exponential. So I'm going to draw a dotted line. And then my stretch is 3. So from my start point, I'm going to go up 3 and over 1. And then up 1. And then I want to graph my split point, which is at negative 1, 1. And so that one's already graphed, so that's my dotted line. So then just kind of lightly, I'm just going to draw in the graph. And then I have to decide from my split point, do I trace my graph going towards the left or trace it going towards the right? And so I know that because of up here. So this is saying greater than or equal to negative 1, so I would go to the right. Greater than means go to the right. So all the values of x greater than negative 1. So then that means from my split point, which is right here at negative 1, 1, I'm going to go to the right. Okay, so I'm going to just do that a different color. And I'm going to darken that in. So then there is the piece of the graph I want, okay? All right, so there's that. And so I don't need this, so I'm going to go ahead and just erase it. I no longer need an asymptote for that, right? Because there's no lower bound other than that dot, okay? So I can erase that as well, okay? So now I'm going to do my bottom graph, so I'm going to do this one over here. So for my bottom, I'm going to put this in standard form. So I have y, the plus 3 needs to move over, so it's going to be minus 3 equals negative 2, absolute value of x plus 2. So I move the plus 3 over. So y minus 3 equals negative 2x plus 2. So then my start point is at negative 2, positive 3. My stretch is at negative 2, or is negative 2. And then I want to find my split point. And so it's at negative 1 still, and then I'm going to evaluate it into here. And I'm going to just do it by the side. So I'm going to replace x with negative 1. So replace x with negative 1. So then negative 1 plus 2, so that is equal to 1, 2 minus 1. And then I have a plus 3. And so negative 2 plus 3, so that's negative 2 plus 3, is positive 1. So my split point is negative 1, 1. And it's going to be an open dot because it's not equal. So x is less than negative 1, not equal to negative 1. Okay, now I'm going to graph my bottom graph. So I go to my start, so at negative 2, 3. And my stretch is negative 2, so I'm going to go down 2 over 1, so that dot, and down 2 over 1. And then my split point, which is at negative 1, 1. So this is an open dot, but because it's already closed, I don't need to make it open. So the closed dot takes precedence, so the two parts connect together. So then for my graph, I'm just going to do a light graph here. And I know I want the values less than negative 1. So my split point is at negative 1, 1, and I want to go to values less than negative 1, which means I need to trace the graph going towards the left. So trace the graph going towards the left. So I'm going to go up and down. So up and down. And then there's my graph. Okay. All right, so now I have to do domain and range. So I'm going to label my four corners. So this arrow is pointed down and left, so that would be negative infinity and negative infinity. This corner is pointed up and to the right, so positive infinity, positive infinity. So then my domain is just going to be from negative infinity to positive, and my range is as well. Okay. All right, and then let's take a look at the back side.
So this is for uh, question number 13. So I'm going to work out number 13. So I'm going to start with my top equation. So I'm going to do that down here. So top. So I have to put that in standard form. So the minus 3 is going to add over to the y. So that will be y plus 3. And then 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. So then my start is at positive 1, negative 3. So opposites. My stretch is 2. And then for my split, let me squeeze that in here. I'm splitting at negative 2. So replace negative 2 in for x. So I'm going to put negative 2 in there. So x is negative 2. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So I'm going to run out of room. So I'm going to squeeze that in up here. So then the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So I have 6. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then 6 minus 3 is 3. So my split point is negative 2, 3. It can equal, so it will be a closed dot. And then now I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So my start point is at 1, negative 3. So over 1, down 3. My stretch is positive 2. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1. And then lightly connect it. Oops, I forgot my split point. Hold on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do that again. All right, so over 1, down 3. And then my stretch is 2. Okay. So now my split point is at negative 2, 3. So negative 2, and then 1, 2, 3. OK, <laughs> now I'm going to connect it. OK, so and it's a V-shape because of the absolute value. And a closed dot here. So now from my split point, I look up here. So it's saying x is less than or equal to negative 2. So less, meaning I'm going to trace the graph to the left. So that means this part up here. So I'm just going to darken this in. And then erase, because I don't need any of that. And then now I have a middle graph, so I have a middle. So this is just saying y equals 3. So because it's a special case, it doesn't have an x and a y. So it doesn't have an x and a y. I just graph it. It doesn't have a start. It doesn't have a stretch. So I'm going to go to where y is equal to 3 which is a special case, right? Anytime we have a special case, we don't have to do all this extra stuff. And then here is telling me only graph between negative 2 and 3. So on this line, okay, where am I at negative 2? So 1, 2. And normally it would be an open dot, but I'm already closed here from my other graph, right? So I don't circle it and make it open. And then go till you stop until you get to 3. So now on here, so now I'm going to go to the right 3. 1, 2, 3, and it's a closed dot. And it's everything in between, right? So this is a special case, right? Special case, no variables. So y equals 3 is horizontal, and I'm in between negative 2 and 3. So to the left 2 from my y and to the right 3. So in between negative 2 and 3, closed on the 3, it is open on the negative 2, but because it was closed here, the close takes precedence. Okay? All right, and then now let's do my bottom graph. Very time consuming, right? They're tricky, but mostly time consuming. So y equals negative absolute value of x plus 2. So my start is at negative 2, 0. My stretch is negative 1. I have a split point at 3. So I'm going to substitute 3 in for x. And I'm going to do it up here for room. So I have negative, replace x with 3. So this will be 5. And then the absolute value of 5 is 5. But I still have that negative. So my split point would be at 3 and negative 5. Greater than, not equal. So I'm going to have an open circle there. Okay, so because it's not equal, open circle. Okay, so graph your start. So negative 2, 0. My stretch is negative 1, so down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. And then my split is at 3, negative 5. 
and it's open circle. And then I'm going to sketch it. Okay, so now for my graph, I want to be greater than 3. So that means I want to point to the right. So I trace the graph going to the right. So it's an open circle here and trace going towards the right. So I'm not going to do anything back here, but only this section right here. Okay. All right. And then erase this part. Okay. So now the domain and range on this is tricky, right? So we have two separate pieces two separate pieces. So I'm going to find the domain and range here and then join it with the domain and range here. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different. Okay, so for let's do my domain and range first on the pink. So I'm going to use two different colors so I can remember. So this is going to end up being, um, you know, looking separate. So this arrow here means I'm going to go up and to the left forever. So left, negative, up, positive. And then no other arrows on this graph. So I'm going to count how far to the right. So one, two, three. So it goes to the right, three. And then how far up and down. So one, two, three. So the lowest point is here, right? And it's one, two, three. So positive three. So these two are both three, right? One, two, three to the right. And then one, two, three up. Okay. So this domain is negative infinity to 3 and close dot there, right? Yeah. And then the range bottom top is 3 comma infinity and it is closed. So now I want to do the other domain and range. So now I'm looking here and then I say, okay, this one, so I'm going to do its own corner right here. Didn't give myself much room. So I'm looking at this one right here, and I'm going to do its own corners here so I don't get confused. So this arrow is pointed down and to the right, so positive infinity, negative infinity. And then this is no more arrows, so how far left? And it goes 1, 2, 3, so 3 to the farthest point left, and then how far up it goes, so this is the highest point, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, okay. So I have to pay attention to the fact that I'm going, I know it's negative up here, but that's the highest it goes. So for this one, my domain, so I'm going to do a union here, is from 3 to infinity, not equal because it's open. And then my range, so bottom to top, so that would be negative infinity to negative 5. And there is the domain and range on separate pieces. But what I have to now look at is are these, can these be combined? And I look at them, right, to see where are they starting and stopping. So on my domain, do I really have to have these be separate, or can I just say it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity? And I look to say, okay, well, is it including the number here? The 3. So this one does, this one does not. So that means it overrules if it does. So that means for my domain that this right here is the same as negative infinity to positive infinity. So if we look at the graph, it takes on every value, right, between negative infinity and infinity, even the 3, even though it's not connected. So for the range, there's a big giant gap in between these two graphs. So because vertically there's a big gap, then I have to keep my range separate. My domain can be combined because horizontally there's not a gap. And that's it for the homework help.